Hi everyone, it's Marieta. Welcome to today's live Q&A. Today I'm going to talk about how you start a business and get L visa. And this is particularly going to be a live Q&A for people who are interested to start a business in the US. But they are not from E2, three country. There are many of you guys who are asking, what's the option if I'm not from the three country and I cannot apply for E2 visa? What are my options? So today I'm going to cover what are your options if you are thinking to start a business in the United States, but you're not from E2 tree country. Now, I do want to give you a brief overview, especially if you are not familiar with E2 visa topic. Okay, what's the main difference? Um, basically, if you want to start a business in the United States, you have to invest. Otherwise, you're not going to get a visa, the work visa. Obviously, you can start a business in the United States, even if you, if, especially if you don't need a visa, you can still start a business, but you're not going to be able to manage the business and reside in the United States. If you want to manage the business and reside in the United States, you need a visa. Um, so what are the visa options? It's either E2 or L, or you can jump right away to a green card, which is EB5. In case of EB5, you have to invest half a million or one million, obviously, majority of people don't have half a million or one million so what i'm focusing on is actually serving people who can invest less than 100k and they still want to move to united states reside in the united states and do business okay so if you're someone who wants to start a business and can invest let's say between 50 to 100k then e2 visa is perfect for you okay however in order to apply for e2 visa Guys, you have to be from a treaty country, okay? If you are not from a treaty country, today I want to discuss what, the, what are your options, okay? So, in order to find out if your country is the treaty country, you have to simply Google E2 visa treaty countries because I see some people already that are like Syed, hi, E2 visa, I need, okay? You have to check if you are from a treaty country uh, or let me know where you're from and maybe I will tell you if you qualify or not. So you guys have to first check if you are from a treaty country. If you are not from a treaty country, no problem because you can go with plan B. I call it plan B. So what is this plan B that I'm talking about? That is called L visa. Now, in order to apply for L visa and start a business in the United States, you have to already run your business in your home country. Let me give you an example. People who are from India, for example, or Nepal. Actually, I did a video on this, so you can go back to my YouTube channel and search for E2 visa for Indians and Nepali citizens, where I talk about if you don't qualify for E2 visa, you can apply for L as long as you run business in your home country. And that is very important to note, because if you don't run business in your home country, you have to start running a business in your home country and after one year you can open affiliated office in the United States if the business is successful because let me talk let me give you let me give you exact requirements when it comes to L visa when it comes to L visa you have to uh, show that you are either manager or executive and you are running this business for at least one year in preceding three years okay so you have to show that you are successful already. At least you run the business for one year in preceding three years, and then you are able to open affiliated office in the United States. Also, that being said, the business that you're going to open in the United States must be connected to existing business in your home country. Recently, someone asked me, do I need to start, dif can I start different business in the United States or, you or I need to start the exact same business in the United States? And the answer to your question is you have to start the same business because it's affiliated business, okay? So there is no such a thing as you run a business in your home country. For example, you operate a restaurant in your home country and suddenly you want to open totally different business in the United States and you want to be on L1 visa. There is no such a thing, okay? You cannot do that. Therefore, you have to understand the requirements. You have to open affiliated office that is connected, related to existing business in your home country. And if you don't run the business in your home country, first you have to start a business 
and operate it for one year in preceding three years and then only you can open affiliated office in United States and then you can apply for L1 visa which is the manager executive visa. If you have employees you can bring them under L1B category which is intercompany transferee visa type. So this would be way to go for you if you are not from a treaty country. On the other hand you know this because you know, every single video I'm talking about E2 visa and you guys know the requirements. If you are from a treaty country, you can apply for E2 visa and you don't have to worry about it whether you are already running a business in your home country or not. You can directly apply for E2 visa and therefore in my opinion this is like pretty much the ultimate startup visa, the ultimate entrepreneur visa because this visa allows you to actually start a business from scratch, invest, substantial amount of capital that is usually between 50 to 100 K based on my experience, but it can be even less because it depends on your business. Okay. But today I did want to mention that if you are not from a treaty country, you still have a choice. You know, you can still take care of your status. You can still run your business, but it's going to take you a little bit longer, especially if you don't have existing operating business in your home country. Okay, so you need to start it first, you have to, you have to act, incorporate in your home country first and then you're going to open up the affiliate after one year. So I hope it makes sense guys. Uh, let me see your comments. I'm from Pakistan and I work in Saudi Arabia and I need free visa. I don't do free visas, I don't know what you mean by that. I don't do any free visas, there, no, there is no such a concept as free visas. Um, if you're looking for free visa, you're probably in the wrong place. There's nothing I can do for you. If you need more information, obviously you can go back to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash immigration biz. I have over 300 videos on this topic, especially the E2 visas, L visas. Um, you can watch those videos. And for those who are ready to start a business, if you have a great idea, perfect. And if you want to start this process, I do have upcoming program, the American Dream Accelerator, that I'm launching in two weeks. And you can get on the wait list if you want to be notified when we launch. This program is going to take you from idea to actual business in the United States, you're going to incorporate. Before we even do that, we're going to validate the idea. We're going to make sure that it's a good business idea, that you're going to actually make money. And I'm also going to teach you how to market and do your sales because that's very important component. Sometimes people move to the United States, they get a visa, but they are stuck. They don't make any money. And after that, they are not able to extend the visas because they don't they don't have any profit um, and therefore I do teach my clients how to market and do sales especially uh, in the proper way so actually make money and you grow the business uh, and la later on eventually you scale it and you can uh, apply for a green card. So the accelerator is going to bring you from it's going to take you from idea to actual business and it's going to be eight weeks long program and you can sign up. The link is about this video. There is a registration link. If you watch me on YouTube, it's going to be below. Let me see your comments, guys. How do I obtain student visas? Sorry, I don't do student visas anymore. I do have actual course, e-course on how to get a student visas. You can visit immigrationbizacademy.com and you can check that out. There is a course that is going to help you out how you actually get a visa, a student visa. Um, but typically you have to be enrolled in school, you have to have uh, the, the I-20 form. Without I-20 form you cannot actually apply for F1 student visa. Ali, hi, I want to know, can I get E2 visa here in Oman since last year I, let's see, since last year I have a gold jewelry company. Okay. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure if Oman is treaty country. So make sure to Google, check if Oman is treaty country. Uh, just Google E2 treaty countries, list of treaty countries. You're going to see uh, if Oman is on the list. I don't know. I don't know if Oman is the treaty country. Uh, if Oman is the treaty country, then you can apply with the jewelry business. If Oman is not the treaty country, then you can still apply because you can basically, um, you can basically get the L visa. Right. Like I said, if you have existing business, you operate a business in your home country, even though you're not treaty country, you can still apply for L visa. That will be the L1A category. OK. And yes, for the accelerator, I'm going to also include uh, there is going to be a module on how to get L visa. So if you are someone who is looking for E2 visa or L visa, you can still enroll to accelerator. And the link is about this video. 
So Ali, you can click on the link and get on the list if you are interested. It's imibiz.com slash accelerator. I'm planning to apply time more for US visa. Okay, good for you. Hi, Kwasim, nice to see you. How are you doing? Nice to see you in a bright, shiny day. Yeah, actually today I'm in, I'm in Slovakia, where I'm from. Let me show you the view. I'm in Bratislava. I'm visiting for two days. So this is actually where I'm originally from, guys. Um, okay. What do you suggest, Timor is asking. What do you mean? Um, what do I suggest? If you want to start a business, I, first of all, I suggest that <laughs> you watch my videos because you are not probably familiar with the requirements since your question was very general. So you should probably watch my other videos. So I suggest you go to youtube.com slash immigration biz and watch other videos. There is also a video how to prepare for the visa interview. I made video on that. Part of the accelerator program that I'm launching is that I'm going to I'm going to train you how to answer the questions at the visa interview. So if you are looking for start a business, get a visa and live your American dream as an entrepreneur, um, you should enroll to Accelerator. That's something that I suggest. That's why I, that's why I created Accelerator. It's designed to help you go from idea to actual business. Thank you, Kasim. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Um, Typically, when you go for interview, you know, um, well, there are different, you have to prepare in different ways, especially if you go for interview, E2 visa interview, L visa interview, and B visa interview. And B visa interviews are just a regular B visa, tourist visa, even though they are called business visa, it's just a B1 visa, which is a regular tourist visitor visa. And there is a different strategy how you prepare for B visa interview compared to like when you go for E2 visa interview. E2 visa is very different because you are actually investing, you bring your value to US economy. So it's quite different compared to B visa. Um, the number one reason why B visas are denied is because lack of strong ties to your home country. And that is something that you have to keep in mind. Uh, with E2 visa and L visa is slightly different, especially with L visas, it's dual intent visa meaning your intent can be immigrate eventually because you can go from L to actual green card, EB1. Um, it's slightly different, you know. What you have to establish during the interview, the documents are slightly different. It's actually more complex petition compared to B visa. But the B visa is usually um, denied more frequently because, uh, because of the nature of the visa. It's just a visitor visa. And there are many people who don't have strong ties who want to visit the US. But it's almost obvious that they are not going to visit, just visit. They're going to actually stay there. So you have to understand that. Um, and also it depends where you're from. You know, what's your country? Wh where are you from and what's your background? And also it depends whether you have applied for the visa in the past or this is the first time you're applying. If you have any history, previous history, travel history, um, etc. So it really depends. Okay, let's see. What are your other questions? Yeah, I don't do refugee visas. I'm sorry. I focus on entrepreneurs and business owners. Cameron is asking if I can help him with refugee visa. Yeah, Jordan, I have helped entrepreneurs from Jordan, William. You can go to YouTube and check out there is a case study interview with garage.com. These guys were from Jordan and they are entrepreneurs. So I just focus on entrepreneur visa. It's either E2 or L. And then later I focus on scaling and then green card for these individuals. I work with people who want to create transformational businesses that are actually adding value to the world. And if you are someone who is looking for a sponsor, meaning employer in the US, I'm probably not the person for you. I'm sure you can find different lawyers who can help you. Sure, my pleasure, William. Timor, you have been to the US, then great. Um, like I said, Timor, if you want to start a business, 
you know, I can help you out. But if you are looking for just, you know, to find a sponsor or employer, I'm probably not good fit for you. Um, and you, yes, if you want to start a business, you can um, get on the wait list and get uh, on the wait list for the upcoming program, the American Dream Accelerator. The link is about this video or below. I think I covered your question, guys. Sure, you're very welcome, Cameron. Hi, everybody. Yeah, Khan is asking again, you want to study visa? Yeah, like you can get a course, how to get a student visa. It's immigrationbizacademy.com. I already mentioned it today. For some reason, people keep asking for student visas, uh, which I totally understand. Like, I went to U.S. university, and uh, I suggest that definitely it's a good place to start. But, you know, in general, you don't necessarily need a U.S. university degree if you want to start a business, if you are an entrepreneur. Mm, what kind of business Timur is asking? I don't know. What kind of what, What's your experience? What kind of business you want to start? It can be any kind of business as long as you are actively managing the business, as long as you are, I say, passionate about it. Because if you don't like what you do, you're not going to be successful. So and it can be any kind of business, you know. There's no limit. Uh, if you want to invest into real estate, be careful because it has to be active business. And if you invest into real estate, it's considered more as a passive investment. What's the minimum to start a business? Again, it really depends on your particular business model. Um, you know, some companies require 30,000, 40,000, 50,000. There are companies or business types actually that require more than 100K. So it really depends. With E2 visa, the requirement, it has to be substantial amount of investment. With L visas, there is no such a requirement, but the requirement is that you have to run the business in your home country and you have to manage the business at least one year for one year in preceding three years. So, so there is no minimum. Now, if you wanna get a green card, EB5, the minimum would be half a million, a minimum, or one million if you want to invest directly in any kind of commercial enterprise. Um, so it depends. And again, like if you don't know how to get the funds, if you don't know like what kind of business to start, if you want to validate the idea, um, meaning what I mean by validate the idea means like check with the market if there is a response, if the business is going to be successful, because this is crucial. You have to validate the idea. If you don't validate the idea, you're going to be successful because you're going to create something. You're going to invest into business that is not going to be successful and therefore you're going to fail eventually. And therefore, before you actually invest, you have to validate the idea. OK, and then you're going to incorporate and then you invest. Now, when you ask me how much do I need to invest, it depends on your business. And what I'm this is everything that I will cover in 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 the accelerator because it's very individual. It depends on individual needs and the business model is different in each case. And so there is no black and white answer to your question. Coffee shop. Yeah, sure. Sounds good. But you have to understand also where is going to be the location? Is it good location? Etc. You know, because because there are many coffee shops, right? So you have to understand, like, the location is important in, in, in case of coffee shop or a restaurant. You know, in case of restaurant, it might be even more than 100K because you're going to hire people. And again, it depends on the restaurant. It really depends on the concept of the restaurant, location of the restaurant, right? You have, like, small... It's not even restaurant. It's more like a bistro or, or like a coffee shop, right? The investment is definitely less than 100K. But if you want to open up a restaurant, you should invest probably $150,000, $200,000. That's something that is like more reasonable. That would be like a reasonable investment. But again, it depends on the concept. And in California and in New York, there are so many restaurants. So you have to make sure that the, the, the concept of your restaurant is good so you can actually make money, right? You don't want to just get a visa. Sometimes people come to me and they just want to get a visa. And I'm like, yeah. I don't want to help you because I don't care if you just want to get a visa. You should you should think about the concept, the business itself. So you actually provide value to the market. You help other people and you also generate money. So you have a good lifestyle in the United States. You don't want to suffer. Right. 
and especially you won't be able to extend the visa if you you know if you just get a visa for if you just start a business for the sake of getting a visa because then you're not going to generate profit you're not going to pay you know you're not going to you won't be able to extend the visa in other words how much finance is required for a small gold shop workshop um i don't know you tell me because you are the one who is running this type of business so you have to make your research like how much you actually need how much money do you need to start this small shop in the United States where you want to sell jewelry? I don't know. Like, I'm not running a jewelry shop. You tell me. You have to make your own research. Like, how much would you actually need if you want to start this type of business in the United States? In my opinion, I mean, you're starting a small shop. It might be less than 50K, but you have to, you have to double check. You have to make your own research. And then again, like, I would also validate the idea with the market. Because, you know, you can start a shop, but if nobody's going to buy from you, you're going to invest and you're going to fail eventually. Ali, I hope it makes sense. Cameron, I'm engineer of apartment. Can I do everything in apartment? How is it? I don't know what you mean by that, that you are engineer. Like you are taking care of, I would, I would start a business that maybe like start a business where you, where you actually provide solution. I don't know. Like, what do you mean exactly with that? You are engineer of apartment. What does it even mean? Like you come and you fix things inside of people's homes or what exactly do you do? And also you have to understand, like, if you are an engineer, like, you might need a license, additional license in the United States. You need to check that requirement if you need actual license. Because if you have a license in your home country, that's one thing. But then if you want to have a license in a different country, some, some professions are re regulated, right? So you need to have a license in order to practice that profession. I'm not sure how is it with engineering, to be honest. If I buy cars and sell them. Yeah, you can do that, I think. I help people, I help entrepreneurs who started, but it wasn't necessarily buying, selling cars. It was more like a repair shop, kind of, like a tuning cars type of business model. Um, yeah, you can start buy and sell cars, I believe. You know, you guys have to understand, like, that is part of the accelerator program. Like I, there is no way I can tell you right now how much you need to invest. If you just ask me, I want to start this business. How much do I need to invest? And how do I know? Like there is actual process that you have to go through. How are you going to determine how much you have to invest? That is, the, that is something that I teach in the accelerator program. Okay, the American Dream Accelerator. Because I cannot tell you how much you need to invest. If I tell you, I will be lying. Because I don't know how much you need to invest. It's a process. You, de you determine how much you need to invest, right? But based on my experience, I typically work with people that invest from 50 to 100K or 50 to 150 or 50. It starts with 50,000. I don't work usually with below. I don't work with people who invest below 50,000. But there are cases where people invest in 30,000 and st they still got approval. But it really depends on the business. You know what I mean? So guys, I think I'm going to wrap up because I have probably low network connection. It sh tells me low con network connection. Um, I hope you can see me because it says like low network connection. I don't know what it means. Um, good. I think I'm going to wrap up and I answer most of your questions, I think. For those who want to dig deeper, you guys get on the wait list for the accelerator. The, uh, the link is above and it's going to be also below this video. And uh, if you need additional information, you can always check my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash immigrationbeast. 
and there are some case studies as well actually some interviews that I've done mm, so you can definitely check it out and then stay tuned stay tuned because I will do another live stream probably this week probably on Friday and the accelerator is coming up and I'm very excited because the program will take small group of entrepreneurs and I will go from idea to actual business and we will create a transformation and I'm going to be focusing on serving these people probably the rest of this year so the accelerator won't be open this year um, and I will see how it goes and then probably open it up again next year so if you do want to work with me you should probably get on the list the wait list is up you can see the link about this video or below and that's it so thank you so much for tuning in i'll see you in my next live have a great day and if you have additional question comments you can always leave them below and i will reply as soon as i can bye bye guys